just God, it's amazing. Life is just a marathon, so pace it. Rush pain, that thing's hate me, Damon's. Life ain't gotta be hard, just keep it basic. Welcome back to Fort Meade Declassified. I'm Gloria Martin with Public Affairs Office, and today we're at historic London Town and Gardens with Miss Mickey Love and Mr. Bob Live, um, the executive director and the board president. So thank you so much for joining us today. Mm -hmm. How are you Thanks guys for doing? Us. Great having you here. Great, awesome. Well, why don't you guys go ahead and start by telling us what is historic town, London Town? Historic London Town and Gardens, uh, London Town itself. Back in the early 16 to mid 1600s, this was the hub of commercial activity on the upper Chesapeake Bay. Uh, tobacco trade, slave trade, all that occurred here at London Town. Uh, then at some point in time in the late 1600s, Annapolis grew in importance and they were designated the tobacco center for the bay. And so London Town began to lose its uh, hub of commerce, let's say. But it was still a key place because it stood in the South River and the ferries that went from London Town across to Annapolis. And so uh, th that's how it existed. In the, uh, later on, Anne Arundel County bought this property. And they turned this, this building, the William Brown House that we're in today, built in 1760, uh, they turned this into the almshouse of Anne Arundel County for the poor and the indigent. Uh, the William Brown House itself was for the white poor, and there was a wooden structure to the east of us that was for the African American poor. And eventually it all merged together, though. And then in the uh, mid 20th century, the Alms House went away. And uh, we had the William Brown House sitting here. And in 1970, the London Town Foundation, uh, of which I'm the president, we took over running this property for Anne Arundel County. And the property is 23 acres in Edgewater, Maryland. Uh, we have the historic William Brown House, which uh, in 2017, 18, and 19, we undertook major restoration efforts, partnering with Anne Arundel County and uh, the state of Maryland. And we also have a 10-acre woodland garden uh, that was established in 1971 or two. And it has some very uh, unique horticultural specimens that are you know, valued throughout our country. And it's just quite a beautiful place with a lot of history and uh, a lot of things for families to do. As a matter of fact, as you came in, you noticed some of the tenement buildings. The buildings that are built out of old uh, wood are on the actual foundations of historic structures here in London Town as a result of archaeological digs that were done here uh, in, in the early 70s. So uh, we're really pleased to have this opportunity to let the world know a little bit more about what's here in our backyard. Yeah, especially Fort Meade and all of our service members who can come out here and visit with Absolutely. their families. Absolutely. You guys aren't too far. You're only 30 minutes away, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what are your hours when you guys accept um, a visitors? We're open to the public Wednesday through Sunday, 10 to 4. Okay. And we have historical tours, garden tours. And the, and the history of this space, I mean, it was its own village. It was its own place before Annapolis w was established. And so you had families living here. Unfortunately, the, you know, the slave trade was, as he said, part of this, our history. And so we do honestly share the information about that and talk about that um, because we want to remember and honor um, what was going on and, and recognize the people that lived through a very difficult time. Uh, we have been named a um, UNESCO site, which is we're going to get a marker later this year, uh, recognizing that we, uh, the people of the Middle Passage, which were the slaves that rode across the, the uh, ocean to come here and be slave. And slavery was a big part of what this run because it was tobacco farms. So we, we want to show that, show that we don't want to do that, but also <laughs> recognize that uh, it's part of who we are and we have to be honest our history is our history right. but it's an opportunity what I like to say about London Town is there's something for everybody um, if you're a history buff you'll love the tour of the buildings and the uh, coming here and seeing this and a lot of our 
tour guides who are in period clothes, so you'll get that whole history component. Uh, if you're into gardens, the 10 acres of gardens are just beautiful, as this is a special time of year to come see those. Um, and uh, also we have a venue that is suitable for weddings, so we have a lot of, about 80 weddings that we do a year oh, wow. uh, yeah. on this site because we, we're a water location. So people can come, individuals, families, kids, and you can even bring your dog with a leash. You know? <laughs> so as I said, there's something for everybody, even your dog. So we really encourage everybody to come out. That's awesome. That sounds like a great opportunity and mm -hmm. something that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. What about um, if someone wanted to provide charitable support to London Town? How well, we're open to that. That's a good thing. <laughs> um, yes, we are a 501c3 nonprofit, although the county owns this building and these grounds, we run, the London Town Foundation runs this, this park, if you will. And so we're certainly welcome to sponsors. We're open to memberships. An individual membership is just $45. A couple is 60. And a family of with four person is 85. We also offer a discount to residents and active military. So that would only be $60 for a family of, of four. Oh, so, yeah, that's uh, awesome. And Good that deal. means you can come visit you know, anytime. Because mm -hmm. the, the admission fees are $11. You wouldn't pay admission. You're a member. You can come as often as you want, visit as often as you want. And then we have supporting memberships at, that go on up to uh, the Lord Mayor's Club, which is uh, 1683 a year. We also look for sponsors for events. We're currently planning our, a gala event for May of 2024. Um, and we'd welcome sponsors for that. But we really want to keep the history alive and the story alive because what it is, if we don't remember our history, we're doomed to repeat it. So right. you know, we want to tell the good parts and the bad parts about our history. But I like to think of this place as a miniature Williamsburg because you do kind of get that same feel of touring the buildings. And in our visitor center, which is across the way here, we have museum downstairs that they can walk through and see the different exhibits and learn more about the history of London Town. Oh, well, that's awesome. Hello again. This is Command Information Time. During September 15 to October 15, we celebrate National Hispanic Heritage Month as it marks the time to showcase and honor the many contributions Hispanic Americans have made to the Defense Department and our nation. Please join us on Thursday, 21 September at Club Mead as we celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month. And I would like to remind you that during the next few weeks, Fort Mead will conduct several training exercises. Please be mindful that some sections of the installation will be blocked off. That's it for this week. See you next time. Do you guys have volunteers? Are you all... We had volunteers twofold. We have garden volunteers who come they, who come here religiously every Tuesday. To They're work out the there garden. working. Today. They're there today, <laughs> and uh, pulling weeds, straightening up, you know, keeping keeping the gardens fresh looking. And then we have docents who work this building and the other two historic buildings uh, in period clothes sometimes, and they give people tours of the space and give you the history. Like for example, where we're sitting now. Across there is the bar. This was a this was the hub. This was the tavern of the times of London Town. So um, that was where the food came up, and there, there's a space there where they serve the food, serve the drinks. Um, so you really get the whole whole feel of the place. There's bedrooms, and then downstairs is really the main kitchen where things were done, and it's where um, it, was, it was the slave quarters. Um, so you really get all of all of the, the space is uh, something to learn. You wouldn't realize it was here. Oh yeah, sounds like you guys have a lot to offer. Mm -hmm. uh, I heard you're renovating for 2027. What does that look like for you guys? We have a couple of projects on the books, mm -hmm. and you can attest more. Uh, one of which is we have a pier out here that we want to restore and take it out further than what it is right now so that it could actually accept the tall ships and have tall ships visiting here. And then we also, to make it more handicap accessible, we have an ADA trail that's planned. Both of these would probably take place in 2025. They're in the planning stages now because we really want it to be open to everybody. Yeah. We're also, for our equipment, we're constructing a large equipment barn. That'll go up later this year. It's already paid for, thank goodness. And an education pavilion mm -hmm. uh, that'll allow somewhere for the students, etc., when they come to visit, that they can congregate out of the bad weather if we have it. Uh, the interesting thing is in this building, 
Historic London Town and Garden. This was over half a million dollars to restore this building. And uh, we did restoration as well as repair. And uh, that's how we found, if you look at that brick there, the original arch for the pass-through from the tavern. Uh, it's just really cool when you think, I'm not gonna tell the story, I gotta do it. Back in uh, 1783, December 23rd, General George Washington resigned his commission as the commanding general of the Continental Army. He did that in the Senate chambers of the Annapolis capital. Annapolis was the capital then. And uh, that's a very historic day because it, it basically allowed us to become a constitutional democracy. Because like a lot of generals of the day who would have just kept their rank and taken over as dictator, General Washington did not do that. He resigned. And he rode his horse down to the vicinity of Quiet Waters Park of Annapolis. And he took the ferry across the South River. And he pulled in and he dined in London Town before he went on home. And in our mind, he dined right here in the William Brown House in this room, because this was the main structure of the time. Yeah, one of the things that we, it's interesting is, is uh, Washington was one to journal and write things down. And although he did not mention London Town in his journals, his assistants, his support staff, they mentioned London Town in their, in their write-ups. So uh, it's difficult to find out all the history, but even to think of him being in the area as you know, part of our base of our country, it's, really. It's just pretty cool when you mm -hmm. think about that. Yeah. And we're hoping that in 2026, which will be the, what's that, the 250th, 250th. anniversary of our country, that we might be able to reenact that. And you know, in the state house, et cetera, have it all occur again. Oh, so stay, all, stay tuned. We're, it's all in the like, early, early planning stages. You know. yeah, we believe yeah. is very worthwhile. Well, you, do you and, guys have a lot of interest in that for volunteers to do a reenactment? Yeah, we, we, well, I've talked with the uh, county executive staff, and uh, there is some interest, but, you know, it takes a while to get it all coalesced. I'm sure. But there's, a, there's actually a group in Annapolis, oh, what do they call uh, there, there were 14 presidents in the United States before George Washington. 14 presidents under the Articles of Confederation. That's before the Constitution. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a whole society in Annapolis that recognizes them. So we're working with them to try and see what we can do to, to make all this come yeah. about. Right now, a lot of museums, and as a matter of fact, there's one coming up this month, they're doing uh, trainings and suggestions for what should museums historically do for the 250th. Because yeah. you want to be historically accurate um, with what you're doing. Uh, so we're, we're, it's all still in that fleshing it out phase of how, how what exactly is going to take place. Another neat thing about a membership here is that it gives you a reciprocal memberships at gardens around the country. If you go up to Maine on a vacation and you see the Maine Botanical Garden, you show your Historic London Town and Gardens membership card and you can just walk in that garden. They allow you in with no fee. Oh, really? So you yeah. guys are affiliated with yes, other... Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. And my wife, you know, we've done that together. Matter of fact, she's the one that got me involved here. <laughs> she was a good volunteer gardener. It still oh, is really? to this day. Oh, okay. She's been doing it like 15 years. So uh, that's how that's, she dra didn't drag me. She spiked my interest. <laughs> well, what else do you guys um, want the community to know? What do you want uh, Fort Meade to know to bring them out here? I, people don't realize the gardens, how exquisite they are. Um, we have about, I'm trying to think of the, the figure, that about 75% are native plants, but 25% are not. So we have... Uh, growth here that people wouldn't necessarily expect to see. We have quite the collection of holly, of um, camellias, I'm trying to remember all of that, <laughs> of camellias, um, uh, rhododendrons, um, magnolias. We have a fantastic collection of magnolias. So they can come here and see, just really experience the gardens if, they're, if that's their thing, you know. and. It's 10 acres, wonderful place to walk. As I said, we do a lot of weddings here and photography sessions here because it's just so beautiful being close to nature. And um, we have a good crew that of our horticulture department to keep things going as well as our volunteers. So um, it's a, just a beautiful place for them to come see. 
Yeah. It's family oriented. Mm-hmm. There's something for everybody. You got that military everybody. discount. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Military yeah. discount. <laughs> and uh, it, it's just, it's a great outing for folks and it's close. And basically it's in our own backyard. What kind of outreach do you guys do with the community around here? Um, we do a lot on social media, you know, sharing what we have. Um, we're also active in community groups, networking groups, business networking chambers, those sorts of things to make people aware. And we're just kind of beginning our to reach out a little more beyond. Uh, I'm new to this position, and when I came in, the conversation was, let's let people know about London Town beyond a 25-mile radius. So we're trying to get the word out in that way. And, and what I like people to think of is this, we have picnic tables, we have a beautiful wide open space. If you're looking for a place to take the family, have a picnic, be by the water, uh, it's just, it, it's, a, it's a day. You can come spend the day and really have a, a good, great outing with very little cost. Yeah, it sounds like a great place to visit and a good mm-hmm. way to spend your weekend. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. all right, well, thank you so much for joining us today. Is thank there you anything for, else you Thanks for coming and yeah. thanks for having us. All right, well, thanks Appreciate for joining it. us on Fort Meade Declassified. We'll see you next time. Yeah, take care. We work hard, just got it. It's amazing.